So. Oh, good. Ooh, welcome to Divorce Diary Show podcast. <laughs> My name is Michelle Train. I'm the creator of Divorce Diaries. And today I have a very, very special guest. I have met him via Chicago Avenues. I don't know what that is about. He is a producer, a actor, a comedian, a musician, a podcaster, a decent human being. David Vox Mullet, welcome. Wow, thank you. Everything you just said just basically amounts to me being unemployable, is what you've just done. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Michelle, I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited. I, I, I love I love you. I love your stuff. I love your show. I love everything you do. And now I get to be a part of this wonderful podcast. So I'm very happy. Thank you for inviting me. So, well, and here's, here's a big thing that I think I've been like trying to do this unveiling of who you are now to divorce diaries, but I'm just, just going to fucking unveil you. So <laughs> I, that reminds me of my babysitter when I was five, but that's fine. We can get into that some other time. <laughs> so, um, David Vox Mullen, I call him Vox. Sometimes I say David, but, um, we had our EP, David Schoner, who's been a longtime friend of mine. It gets confusing. So I call him Vox. He is now our official producer. I'm calling you the official producer of the television series. I we're... am. I am officially the producer of Divorce Diaries, the series, uh, which is which is very much uh, something I'm very proud to be a part of. I I love the project. I love um, just the overall concept, and it's and it's fun because it's something that I mean I produced a lot of different things, but a lot of the things I was a major part of it. Um, and this is kind of my first thing to be attached to that I'm not focusing or I'm not the focus of. So this is, it's a lot of fun for me to be able to kind of go, let's take all of the experience that I have in, in producing things, you know, for myself, for someone else. Uh, so it gives me the ability to kind of give more uh, of my creativity back uh, in, a, in a different way. And it's just, it's just, it's been a really fun experience overall so far, just the process of us working together and getting it together and knowing that at the end of the day, it's you who is going to shine uh, beyond me. So I, I it, it's, it's a neat process for me. Well, I also like to say that I appreciate your words too. Your words mean a lot. I think that we, what I believe in this whole manifestation, prayer, positivity, energy, I'm all about tapping into the other side for all these signs. Right. And I do jokes because when it comes to men dating men, I take the wrong signs. And I think that this is a sign that they're supposed to be with me. And then they well, like, if you're talking to men dating men. That's probably why you're struggling. Um, you, you want to look for men who date women. I think that might be, that might be better off for you. I don't know. No judgment. I mean, it's 2022 at this point, you, you can go for anything you want really. Well, the, <laughs> I don't want to share with anybody. I want one man right. with me and with no one else. So whatever they prefer, I want them to be me. So whatever they, so I, I felt like I kept like last year when I was filming the pilot and I was getting money, even before we filmed getting money for the pilot, I, I was getting introduced to people through, you know, honestly, people were, I, I was putting out, I would write down in my notebook every day, divorce diaries on a network, divorce diaries on a network. I still do that. And, and now I go a little deeper when they say you're supposed to write out what you want, right? Visualiz visualization, write down your intentions, Bob. Like right now I have this by my wall. Yes, love it. Divorce Diaries funded for season one, filming yeah. set. And then I have it over here too. And then when people come over, they're like, "What? who the fuck are you? What are you doing? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's, I would also add um, divorce, divi divorce Diaries on a network that pays us. That would be, <laughs> <laughs> that would be the added thing you want to add to it. So I, I started doing stuff like that because I feel like that can just be generic. So like I had this one person who's kind of like, I had someone in my life last year that like, I told you there's just been a couple of people that have come in that have given advice, thrown shit out there and then dipped out or ghosted me. And it's been, and left me like, oh my God, this is rough. So I remember like the last couple of months I've been saying, Hey, I really just need to find the right producer. Like I really need help. And I'm so thankful that I reached out. Like I just reached out to you in general about the, sh the live show. I asked, I asked David to look at my live show and give me this, some pointers on the improv part because I was kind of getting stuck. 
and you know getting in my head and then he said the nicest thing that was i know genuine and not like just blowing shit up my ass but he's like i just think what did you say you i i won't i won't be your i won't be your oh, mouth sorry oh my gosh i mean just now that you put me on the spot and you said that it was all genuine now i have to try to memorize what i said but no, I no i'm pleasing no 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 i mean basically the idea was just that you were asking me if you should make certain changes um and i and i I watched everything with the open mind of, okay, where can she make changes? And honestly, I felt like, no, I mean, it's, it's everything you were doing was unique enough that I felt like changing it would kind of take away from what you're already doing. You, you are connecting with the audience on such a level that, you know, stand-up comedians strive for that you're already doing, especially with people who can relate to some of the, the situations that you've gone through and, and what you're currently going through. And it's an ever evolving thing, but no, I was like, no, I mean, I, I don't think you should change really anything. In fact, you should do more of what you're doing. And that's yeah. pretty much what I said. And I think what clicked, which could be that, totally bullshit, by the way, I just want but, you to know. Well, no, you know why it's not bullshit was because I resonated with it because that's what myself and Roger, my manager, and which is also your manager. I don't know what they're calling a manager agent, or he's like, my relative at this point, because I talked to him agent. so much. Yeah, he's, he's your booking agent. So he he kind of said, it's like, feels like you're in your apartment with you, like like making laughs and it's fun, it's different. And what, that's kind of what you said too. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna keep going in this direction. And then when I finally stopped tensing up in Florida, I really just hit a point, I hit, I hit it that night. I remember going, oh, this is what it is. And then, you know, it's a roller coaster. So what I love about you, though, is that you've done so much in the industry in and I, I feel like I, I was a musical theater. I was children's theater, Shakespeare, and everyone's like, oh, you do so many different things. I'm like, yeah, but you need to know so many different things in this field because there's so many job opportunities within your craft. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about like what you've where how you kind of started in this industry and and how you landed in co where we met at the comedy shrine yeah, no absolutely i mean i as you said i mean i do a lot of i've done a lot of things and a lot of it was really just kind of learning how to say yes to things that might have even been uh, intimidating at any given time but you know doing it or having that you know famous imposter syndrome where like you agree to do something and you're like oh man if they find out i don't i've never really done this before what do i do it's like no, I mean, it's, it's, you're either talented or you're not really. And if you're talented, that only gets you so far, then, then it becomes practice and experience. Yeah. And so it builds up ever since I was a kid, I was a performer. I mean, I was, you know, five, six years old doing piano recitals. And then at my church youth group doing plays, and then I would do festivals and big events. And then I was in junior high and doing band. And then I was in high school and doing, mm -hmm creating my own band and doing live performances for the entire high school. And like, there was an assembly where I, I wrote and produced an original piece of music that the music director was like, and here's Dave, and this is his original piece. And I literally got, it was one of those like high school movie type situations where wow. I'm at the piano with a, with a microphone doing a rock song that I wrote, a rock ballad that I wrote in high school, you know? Wow. And so I just, it was, it was a neat experience and to have the entire high school class, you know, from, from freshmen through seniors all applauding me. And like, it was amazing. And then, you know, beating the shit out of me in the, on the football field. But anyway, um, but like, I, 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 I was just destined to be a performer. I knew at a young age, I just wanted to, to be in front of an audience. It was how I expressed myself musically. Um, I ended up uh, starting a, uh, a rock band that ended up uh, getting, you know, a lot of notoriety. We became a nationally touring rock band. We toured all over the U.S., for about 10 years the band was called the slipstream which you can actually still find on spotify and apple and all that stuff my albums are out there it was a little harder it was hard rock um so as you look it up now i can tell i'm looking it <laughs> up right now i did look it up but, before uh, not to start i i no, have... it's all good it's all good i mean i, I it's, it's public stuff man that's that's what it's all about but uh we did that stuff and and i wore clothing that i would never wear again and wore hairstyles i would never wear again but <laughs> We did, uh, you know, we did a lot of stuff musically and it was a lot of fun. And then that kind of came to a close uh, in the early 2000s, mid 2005 ish. And um, I, I kind of went back home with with like my tail between my legs with like, OK, well, we did all this. And, and, and now what? I, I kind of felt like I had no identity. 
um, you know, I had done some silly things here and there. I'd done some podcasting and, and, and because I still needed that outlet of expressing myself to an audience and trying to find an audience. And yeah. then ultimately a really close friend of mine uh, invited me to a improv class. And, you know, looking back historically, I, I never thought that comedy would be something I would do, but looking back, it was like, oh my God, comedy was always there. You know, when I was a little kid, the first stand-up special I saw was Eddie Murphy Delirious in the 80s and like, and just George Carlin and Bill Cosby and, and uh, Joan Rivers and Robin Williams. Oh my God. Like all these yeah. people, Howie Mandel and Bobcat Goldthwait and all that. And, uh, you know, just to watch these people do stand-up and I would, you know, when in high school, I'd go to the video store, get a bunch of stand-up specials and watch them on VHS. And uh, for those of you under 30, VHS was a media that we used to use to watch movies on. <laughs> Just imagine Netflix in your hand, um, but yeah. And I love that. So when you were touring, and I like mm -hmm. to do time frames because I, in, in this is frame of mind of divorce diaries, you know, I hit forty this year, and I think a lot of the theme with her in the character of Michelle, which is me, but like the even bigger characters that like we are always rushing because there's like we have to get to this point at a specific spot, yeah. and if we don't. Uh oh, well, then what happens? Because I kind of feel like that's why I got married. And that's why I kind of fell yeah. into the trap. So there's like, oh, yeah. I saw a lot of friends doing that when I was in my late teens, early 20s. And I, and I and I used to get uncomfortable because my friends would be like, Oh, we're getting married. And I'd be like, Why? It, why? It didn't feel right. You know, mm -hmm. um, but... you were on tour from time period where you on tour. From? So, so, so roughly about 1997. Um, the band started 1998, we started picking up, started recording albums and we were on the road pretty much until around 2005, 2006. Wow. And then in 2008, I think was our last show. Um, and it was, you know, there was that trajectory where you go up, you go up, you go up, and then you're starting to come back down. You're starting to play some of the same bars that you played in on your way up. And it's like, oh man. Um, and yeah. so I, I, we, we all kind of started having this feeling of, oh, it's, it, oh, it's this icky feeling of, oh, I think we're, we're on the downslope. Um, and so we, we made an active choice to be like, you know what, gang, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to call it here before it gets too uncomfortable and ugly and nasty. And yeah. so, so me and my bandmates were like brothers. We still talk, you know, daily and, uh, and whatnot. But anyway, so I, I, I kind of had like a year or two of feeling just kind of down on myself and not really knowing what to do. And. And a really good friend of mine invited me to a stand-up, I'm sorry, to an improv class. And I immediately took to it like a fish to water. And where a lot of the people in my class were struggling with stage presence, that wasn't a problem for me because I had been doing that since I was a toddler, practically. Yeah. So being up in front of an audience wasn't the hard part. It was for me, the challenge was I was always funny, but I didn't understand why I was funny. I didn't understand joke construction. I didn't understand how to find funny. I didn't understand, you know, the rule of threes and all those things. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to learn the fundamentals of what makes comedy comedy. I used to be a heckler. I used to go to people's shows and think I was being funny and helping them, you know, until, until I started learning and it's like, oh my God, I was an asshole, you know? And so, uh, which is why I never heckle at somebody's show now. Um, but also, I also have a, I also have a, an understanding of hecklers, probably where a lot of people don't. As comedians, you know, we have this, as I, as I know, you know, there's just this knee jerk reaction of almost vitriol and hatred for somebody who starts talking shit during your set. But like, I, I kind of come from a place of like, I, I know that you probably think you're, you're just helping, you're helping. Don't fucking need your help. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm really good at like like dealing with hecklers, but at the same time, I kind of give them like a wink and a nod, like you know, I'm not, I don't hate you. You know, let's have a little fun. I'm, I'm definitely gonna have fun at your expense because you made a mistake. I'm gonna make you uncomfortable for a little bit, but it'll be all right. Like we can hang out after the show, whatever. Um, and then if people are just not getting that, then we you know kick them out. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like so. Like we did at Comedy Shy when I was there. There was that yeah, second I show. I uh, know. Yeah, that, gotta go. Gotta go. But um, but yeah, so long and short of it, I started training. I started training and I have the luxury of being in like the, the comedy and improv mecca of the world in Chicago. Yeah. So I was just super fortunate to have training from some of Second City's finest alum and, and, and instructors. And uh, I mean, if you go to my website, davidvoxmullen.com, 
you can actually look at you know who i trained under and i put all their stuff there. It's all like second city people and and i have it, it right here yeah and i'm and i'm just blown away with you know who i've gotten to learn from and 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 whatnot and then fast forward to where i'm in today i mean i've, I've spent a good you know handful of years just commercially and professionally performing and working with some people that i grew up watching and like like oh my gosh now i get to you know play with these people and work with these people you know and and it's just a phenomenal thing for me uh and to meet people like you i think it's and the thing is you're so humble about everything and you were probably one of the best spaces that i worked at in a long time and people that i worked for and with because not only did I come to do Divorce Series at Comedy Shrine back in November, but then during my show, I was reading the first Ed Milet book, which I was telling you about offline and while I was in Chicago. And he says, if you're not taking risks and scared about taking those risks, then you're not like basically maxing out. And you asked me to be in the improv show that night and I haven't right. been in an improv troupe in years. So I, in improv is where I first started in comedy. Yeah. Um, and I went, trained at UCB for years. And then I, I'm mad at myself because I paused on it, wanted to go, be with my ex-husband it was a, the dumbest thing i not to say dumb to be with my ex-husband but to leave improv was so uh, I, I don't i'm so mad that i did There's one more reason why he wasn't the right fit exactly and but it really was my own stupidity to stop something for somebody else that was really my own behavior oh, sure. as much I mean, but yeah yeah i mean i i you know I, you know, I, there's, there's plenty of stories that I can ramble on about, you know, girls that I was in relationships with where I yeah. sacrificed something because, yeah. you know, she made me feel like I had to do this, or maybe she mm -hmm. out told me you need to do this. And it was just like, in retrospect, it's like, I would never do that for somebody now. That's why I have such a happy marriage because right. I, I, the moment I met my wife, I was like, this is who I am. These are the things that I desire. Yeah. This is, you know, I'm a performer. I'm going to do this shit till I die. So you, if, yes. you, if you want in, if you want in on this, you're going to share me with my addiction to performance. And she, you know, we had long talks about it and, and I, and God bless her. We've been together for over 20 years now and she has never, ever made it a difficulty for me to, to go off and perform. Never. So, so you guys have been together for a long time wow we met, so, we met in 2002 april 19th 2000 wow. yep and so okay so this let's connect our work into this divorce series universe right you so you have a happy beautiful marriage and you have two children right yes she she came to the marriage with a child and then we put one together here <laughs> i had very little to do with it i just you know, <laughs> i stirred the pot a little that's all i did so wait so now is your wife is she formally divorced or she yes. just okay yes. so and there you go there's a connect so that's why i always say with divorce stories you have everybody has a seat at this story because there's someone's always connected some way shape or form and then you talked about your um anyone in your family have experience with divorce yeah my mom was is married for the third time um and i and i and, and i experienced the divorce at different levels you know the first marriage ended when i was probably like two or three years old Okay. So I dealt with that separation. And then um, I had a stepfather who ended up adopting me. So for all intents and purposes, um, it was very much a father, you know, because he kind of raised me. And then he ended up being a piece of shit. And so they left. Uh, and then uh, she's with somebody now who they've been together for, gosh, uh, probably 20 something years now. And, wow. uh, yeah and they and they're wonderful i mean she you know third time's the charm for her but i i, I don't imagine she's going to get divorced again uh I, I think her and her husband are even my stepfather my second step here uh are just really good together they take excellent care of each other uh, and, I, and i love it so she kind of had to keep going through those bad situations to find the right one but she ultimately did but I, yeah, I mean, I was a, I was a toddler, the first divorce. I was literally in the middle of high school when the second divorce happened, which was high school with all its drama in itself that was thrown into the mix. Uh. That was an interesting thing. So I believe me when I tell you, I definitely know divorce. And then meeting my wife who had recently been divorced for about a year or two before I met her um, through, um, you know, on, not to get too personal, but you know, there was, there was a, adultery on, on the husband's part. And yeah. so- that was kind of, so I was already coming into it like, 
trying you, to be like, I, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. You know, you're such a nice Chicagoan in Jersey. You'd be like the motherfucker cheated. Yeah, you fucked well, no. around. Not Listen, I, I spent plenty of my teenage years when, when someone would call my house for my stepdad who cheated, I'd be like, yeah, he's been here. he cheated on my mom. So we kicked him out, you know? <laughs> So like yeah, so I just I've just had a lot of time to heal. That's no, all. <laughs> I need so much time to heal. So wait, when this a long is, time. It took me a so, long time. so you have a really nice, calm, collected, cool temperature behavior in reactions to these things. I can be um, very reactive when it comes to people that hurt people that take from me and then that's part of the character right of me but like i have actually been doing some soul searching further than i have ever done in the last year about it because it's driving me mad how i feel yeah. like <clears throat> number one i can't let go of when someone does make me feel sad or rejects me um and then number two if somebody really just blatantly uses me and then I also kind of just allowed that in or it, it happened, like I trusted them then they use me or it makes me feel a certain way and then they get away with it. It infuriates me to the point where obviously I'm filtering it out through comedy, but then at the end of the day, it shuts me down from wanting to open up to anybody, go out with anybody, put myself yeah. out there. Listen, I, I do not have all my shit together. I really don't. Uh, I know that I may come off <laughs> cool headed, but I've absolutely, even even recently as, as last week, I had somebody burn me pretty bad and, and it hurt really bad. And I try, I mean, I, I didn't uh, respond to the negativity publicly like they would have probably preferred to instigate. I just, you know, I let it go. I let it go on the surface, but like, it still hurts. I'm still struggling with it. I'm still going back and looking at things going, you know, uh, I'm spending too much energy on it. So I know, so listen, I, I, I go right through the same thing where I, you know, I, I won't get into the details because it's not appropriate for this show, but the long, oh, this show is <laughs> no, but long and short of it is somebody that I invested a lot of time and energy with for a long time. Um, you know, they're, they're going through some, some downside and I'm not, and yeah. so because I'm not, I think there's some jealousy there. And so some public things have been done um, to slander me somewhat. And it's, and it's sad. It's sad. And, um, you know, I think I'm spending too much time wasting energy on it when it really I should just take my own advice and just let it go, you know? Well, I oh, well. can do the wasting of energy for you. I got an <laughs> uncle. Hey, you know, hey, you know. nothing but uh, <laughs> make a few phone calls, okay? But like, because that's actually where I, I like got stuck. Um, so we're creating the, so let's connect. This is a very a big part of who yes. Michelle is. It's like, yeah. I, I thrive in using comedy to heal. And, and I really have been stuck on, I'm like, people tell me to let go, but I physically being this, you know, I was a dancer for years, still am, but not as like heavily as I used to be. I physically can let out my energy and punch a punching bag when I box or yeah. do a leap or dance and get out these great, get out some feelings. I can make a joke and feel better if the audience applauds. But then when this other person who rejected me or ignores me or has turns around and reverses feelings for me, um, it's, it's so hard to let go physically. Of right. Of course, yeah. And so with that said, it's like, how does someone build up, that energy to, to to over time heal and go and it's like there's no right answer but that's where the comedy comes in so we're gonna have some fun here or a heart attack one or the other <laughs> so you're gonna play producer okay but, but you're also going to play like so your job in the game is to defend michelle's honor to these people in her life we're gonna call them her exes <laughs> okay okay uh, we're gonna call so, them your exes or well no they're some of them I actually didn't date, but I okay, mean, <laughs> some of them I dated. And so I have a list of like lines they say they said to me right. and, right. and then, right. um, okay, wait. So, okay. Um, hold on. I forgot to add this one. Um, oh, I can just stay on that. Okay. So we have, and we're going to put one minute on the clock for each of them and you can go back and forth with the X's. Okay. Okay. So your job is for them is to get them to respond to her 
So that was the biggest thing. Like, in other words, as my producer, you need them to answer her because she's falling apart. Michelle is on the ground crying in the fetal position and you mm -hmm. need them to answer her so she can get up and continue working on season one. <laughs> This, this feels a little too close to home, Michelle. <laughs> well, we're right here in my home right now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, and it's off of a, a par part of the game that I do who argued it best a little bit in the show. So one minute and now who, now you, you have the cop, the coach, or the cop, the coach, or the, pro the producer, the other that, the producer who has mommy issues. Okay. Well, and in full disclosure, <laughs> I am a producer. I have mommy issues, but I'm not the one you're talking about. No. Yes, that's right. So I might have to change his character because we were originally <laughs> going to call him man baby, but then I just, just oh, kept saying the producer. And then I was like, oh, because he is, he's not. Okay. We'll call him an assistant producer. He's an assistant director, really. And I just call him producer. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just exposing this guy so bad. Okay. Um, all right. Which one do you want to hear from first? The coach, the cop, or the producer? uh let's do the cop okay the cop one minute to get him to text me back he's going to state why he cannot text her back first okay okay, okay. here we go okay. and i gotta drive my mom to the doctor i can't how far does the doctor live it's right in here where we live in hudson county you don't need to know directions that's okay. my mom's not yours Okay. Well, clearly, clearly, um, your 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 love for your mother is very important to you. That's uh, my mom. She raised me. Absolutely, and that connection is is by far uh, one of the strongest connections that you have uh, to to women in your life. And I think that the first thing you need to do is make sure that your mom is taken care of. I agree. You should definitely do that. But at the same time, you also yeah, you also don't want to damage the relationships you have with other women in your life because you never know when uh, other women can, uh, you know, turn around and poison you <gasps> and eat your food. Uh, and I'll tell you, officer, they uh, they can get away with it these days. You know, well, I mean, as you know, you've probably seen a lot of homicides. So yeah. you want to make sure that it's yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I understand you're so you're so worried. You're so worried. You know, so right. listen, before I got to go, because that's time, you said turn around. Is she going to do anal? I'm in. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, whatever it takes to text back. That's fine. And see. <laughs> so, and I. <laughs> I feel yeah. like I've just committed you to something without your uh, consent. consent. Well, that uh, was the thing of the cop is obsessed with that. Okay. Yeah. So this is P not PG. He'll get his in the end. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So good job. Yeah. Awesome. You actually were wholeheartedly convincing him, Michelle Wilboys. Well, Michelle. Oh, oh, God. oh no. Look at my, my recordings. Okay, we have enough time. Okay, okay. here we go. Okay. Next the one. So the coach or the producer? The coach. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, and okay, ready? Yep. See, he's going to state why he can't text Michelle back. Ready, set, go. Uh, I lost my phone in the car. And I don't know where my keys are. So I listen, can't listen, coach. I, I totally understand what you're talking about. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta face these, uh, these obstacles when they come to you, you gotta, you gotta work hard. You gotta fight hard. You gotta play hard. Yeah, you gotta yeah. get in there and you, you know, and sometimes it feels like you're just not going to make it, but I don't believe in that coach. And I don't believe you believe in that either. I think you yeah. need to look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm not going to let this phone stop me. I'm going to go to the Best Buy or the AT&T store and I'm going to get me a new phone and I'm going to win. Yes. You know why? Then my wife won't see it. Yeah, that's a whole different conversation, coach, but that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Do you, you know what? I love this. I can't wait to go get a new phone. You should never expect it. You're going to win. You're going to win. <laughs> Give it up for the coach. All right. I like, I like that. That was good. Yeah. Okay, cool. the, pro the producer now. Okay. Wait, wait. Um, okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Yep. Oh, this is actual. Okay. Okay. I'm going to cry. Ready? Okay. Set, go. I am in a relationship. Please accept and respect that I just want distance. Um, I, that's totally fine, and I respect that. However, in order in order for you to achieve that, you're gonna have to answer 
for the over six thousand dollar bill that's been placed in your name. What? Uh, yes. Oh no, you didn't know? Yeah, Michelle uh, took one of your credit cards, and she uh, she actually she went for a wild weekend vacation in the Bahamas, and. Uh, how yeah. did she get it? Well, you know, you're obviously not as secure as you think. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're, right. you're going to have to uh, get in touch with her because otherwise you're going to be stuck with the bill. I mean, is, is she really worth six grand or, you know, I mean, I'm just asking you. Oh, I mean, probably I'll call her back my, get that taken care uh, of. Fine. I'll have my lawyers contact her. Uh, see, the problem is that she spooks really easily. So I probably wouldn't do that. You should probably do it yourself just to make sure you don't have that problem. Okay, fine. Good time is up. That was good. <laughs> that was <laughs> it adds to my crazy town with the producer. Wait, that was awesome. Yay, Val! Yay, I know how to make shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of our improv skills. I had such a good time with uh, when I did do the improv show with you guys on oh, stage. Oh, you were a blast. It was so, so much fun. fun. Well, I was scared, especially with the singing part, because I hadn't done like singing improv like that in so long. I was like, oh my god, oh my god you did great. You well, knocked it out of the park. It was a supportive environment. I love that. And I also, so, okay, we have a couple, like five minutes left. I wanted to touch base now on what, what we're doing next. Why don't you share as the producer, as the I don't know, producer? Lebanese, wow. Greek, Spanish accent that I've got there. Um, what are we doing next with the show? What's happening with the television series? Well, we, uh, I'm so excited. We have, um, we have already secured a production company. Uh, so we know who's going to be actually filming the show. And we are currently working with a wonderful team of extremely creative and talented and funny group of writers. And uh, as you know, you're a part of that group. And we are, uh, we're currently just banging out the logistics of how we're going to get these episodes shot. And then the next step is to finalize the actual scripts for the, uh, the episodes. We're going to do six episodes. So it'll be a six episode season. Um, and then the next, uh, we, 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 we've reached out to some uh, pseudo names that we can't drop just yet to see if they have interest in being involved in the project. They have. Um, and then it's just a matter of getting all of our ducks in a row and, uh, and then looking for investors. We're going to be asking for investors to uh, help fund this project so that you and I aren't going to be broke and because uh, we're already broke <laughs> and uh, we're going to try to make it so that somebody else doesn't go broke. And uh, that's, that's where we're at right now. Well said I'm ecstatic and excited. And I've, I've shared this with some people that have seen me doing this, you know, my friend Doug and, and Mark who've seen me do this from like 2015 where they're, they're like, I finally feel calm about the steps that we're headed in and not like what's going to happen next like what should i be yeah. doing next and i am really excited so thank you for everything that you've done so far Absolutely. as a producer and also as a friend i think it's great to just bounce ideas and um you guys should really go check vox's stuff out on his website i'm gonna share the link when i post this but it's davidvoxmullen.com he is trained with so many improv legends michael gelman susan messing matt elwell david rosowski uh rick hall oh my goodness and rick then hall is uh, married to laura hall the piano player from whose line is it anyway oh that's fucking awesome. I, I, she, she, she taught me too but i didn't put her on really well, i hate women so no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'm gonna put her on there Damn. i gotta put her on there I love it. And he's got this whole other, we didn't even get a chance to talk about your podcasting stuff that you've done. Oh, I started that you, in 2009. That's a whole like network yeah, that you created. It's a business. It is a business. I have a district. It started off as a podcast network with all my friends. We were just doing different shows for different TV show podcasts, um, ended up working with all the major networks. And then uh, it turned into its own animal of profitability of uh, it's now it's basically just a distribution network. So if people uh, have an idea for a podcast, but they don't really know where to start or how to do it, uh, you come to my podcast company. It's called DVMPE.com. And uh, we can help you get your podcast from your brain out to the world. I love that. Yep. Yes. So go check it out. DavidVoxMullen.com and stay tuned for more divorce diaries show live shows, the television show, and just all types of content coming your way. Thank you guys. Stay tuned for more. Thanks David Vox Mullen. Thanks for having me.